Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to the show. I'm Sean David, and as always, thanks for tuning in. Back in the 1990s, we were blessed with some of the greatest bigs who ever played in the NBA. And especially when you watch nowadays NBA, you know how special those guys back in the days actually was. I'm talking about guys like David Robertson, DeCampo Motombo, Hakeem Olajuwon, Patrick Ewing, and so on and so on. The most dominant guy that probably ever played in the modern day of the NBA was Shaquille O'Neal. And if you think of Shaq nowadays, you think that this guy was invincible. But there was one certain time, one certain player actually handled Shaq the business. And this is what this video is all about. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at the short time period where this special player actually gave Shaquille O'Neal a hard time. But before we start with this video, if you like the video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I would say, let's start the video. Hakeem Olajuwon averaging close to 33 points per game for the series. Shaquille O'Neal at 28 a game, although I thought for the most part uh, throughout the series that uh, Shaquille did not have his usual fire. Before the 1995 NBA Finals, Shaquille O'Neal was just emerging to become the new superstar of the NBA. Never before has a rookie had such a great impact not only on the floor, but also off the court. With the first pick in the 1992 NBA Draft, the Orlando Magic selects Shaquille O'Neal from Louisiana State University. Give me your best. Let me see, let me see, let me see your best. Is that all you got? In Shaquille O'Neal's rookie season, so in 1992, he turned the Orlando Magic from a struggling team into a playoff contender. He was posting up eye-popping numbers, I mean averaging 23 points per game, almost 14 rebounds and 3.5 blocks, man that's unheard of. So you could see right from the start that Shaquille O'Neal was not your everyday player, that guy was special. In his second season, he got his new running mate Penny Hardaway, which automatically meant the Orlando Magic were the team of the future. Shaquille O'Neal almost averaged 30 points only in the second season while shooting 60% from the field. So already at that time he was probably the best or the second best big in the game. So in the 1994-1995 season, the Atlanta Magic were making a serious run for the NBA championship, not only beating the Chicago Bulls in the playoffs but also the Indiana Pacers making it to the NBA Finals. Hakeem Olajuwon, on the other hand, obviously being much older than Shaquille O'Neal, had already established himself as one of the elite centers in the game. After a finals appearance in the mid-1980s with his running mate Ralph Sampson, Hakeem Olajuwon was struggling coming back to the NBA Finals, even though he was always one of the best bigs in the game. He was not only known for his great scoring abilities and his great rebounding, but his footwork was definitely the best, next to Kevin McHale, which helped him to be literally unguardable. In the early 1990s, Hakeem Olajuwon was going through a transformation. He started to trust his teammates more and more, which made it even tougher for his opponents. Because in the 1980s, when Hakeem Olajuwon got doubled, he would still shoot the ball. But this changed in the 1990s, which immediately translated into more success. In the year 1994, Hakeem Olajuwon won his first NBA championship, playing against the New York Knicks in a seven-game series and dominating Patrick Ewing, and finally getting Hakeem Olajuwon's name mentioned with the NBA greats. are the world champions of 1994. We have a, a unique team, guys learn one another, be more friends. You can see that the commitment, individual commitment, is not his team, it's our team. The Rockets are NBA champions! Oh. 
So Shaquille O'Neal and his Orlando Magic arrived at the 1995 NBA Finals. They were still very young. Penny Hardaway was only in his second season. Shaquille O'Neal was in his third season. Nick Anderson and Dennis Scott were in their younger days. So we're talking about a very, very young team. So that also explains why they were still very inexperienced. Because when you're a veteran team and you arrive at the NBA Finals, you know what to do. And apparently the Orlando Magic and Shaq had some other stuff to do. In the finals run, we we made a very crucial mistake. I can never remember anybody saying, let's win a championship. Mm. Right? Everybody would say, let's just make it to the finals. Make it to the finals. Right? Good and remember, we, we flew through the Eastern Conference, so we had a couple of days off. I ain't no snitch, but I was partying with my best friend. We was partying a lot. <laughs> it was it was a water world out there yeah, in that we, water somewhere. You know, we, was, <laughs> we was out on the sea dudes, we was going to the club. You know, we were good at having fun and then turning it back on. Right. So then we turned it back on, the finals is here. I playing against King. We used to kill him. We straight. Mm -hmm. About to get us some rain. We did a we did a, we did a we did a championship song. Me, you, be sure. Anthony Avery, <laughs> right? We did a championship song. Like we already we did a magic tonight. tonight. Yeah, we we already had that. Everything be alright. So 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 that was a very big mistake because the Orlando Magic beat the Houston Rockets without a problem during the season. Shaq and the team didn't take them serious, and the Houston Rockets punished them, especially Elijah one on Shaq. Houston has to get the ball to Akeem Olajuwon virtually every time down for seven straight games. No, I have not. He has the footwork of a guard. He does study the guard's moves. I think he and Michael Jordan have the best footwork in the entire NBA. That's an offensive foul. And that's the call. To set this ferocious pace underneath and just rolls over. The backup, Akeem appears to lose his balance. Maybe a double dribble there and an easy foul call there. But Shaq has to sit down. 21. Shaquille O'Neal is back on the floor. Back to the matchup with Akeem Olajuwon. And goes right at him. That's what Akeem has to do defensively. That's the only thing I think you can do again. If you paid attention in the beginning, then you saw that Shaquille O'Neal averaged 28 points in the final series, which is number-wise incredible. 28 points, 12.5 rebounds, those are great numbers. But in this case, you really have to be careful because numbers sometimes don't tell you the whole story. In this series, Shaquille O'Neal played 4-5 to five minutes a game, which is pretty common in the final series your superstar plays heavy minutes. So this gives you more time to boost your stats. Not that anybody cares about stats in the finals, but it's a fact. If you take a closer look on the entire final series, you will see that from those 28 points per game, Shaq didn't score the majority of the points on Hakeem. And this is exactly the opposite with Hakeem. He also played almost 4-5 to five minutes a game, averaging almost 33 points per game. But his 33 points, he really went at Shaquille O'Neal. Also, another thing, if you watch carefully, Hakeem Olajuwon really made Shaquille O'Neal work for his points. Hakeem was guarding Shaquille so well that Shaq actually had to fight to get the ball. Shaquille was always used to getting to the heads of his opponent, but that never worked on Hakeem. Yeah, the dream was my favorite because personal reasons. And the reason was he was a guy that I couldn't break. You know, uh, all, all, all the other great centers, I was able to get into their heads a little bit. And that was just my way of of trying to compete. Akeem to me is is number one. But why couldn't you break him? Because I couldn't get into his head. I remember one time I gave him a bow and he just laughed. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice, nice elbow, brother. And then he came out and gave me a <laughs> and, and shot a crazy fadeaway. Yeah, he gave me one of them. So the next time I, I, I came down, I dunked on him and I looked at him in. Like, okay, good one. And he just came out, you shoot. And he gave it to me again. So he was, he was my favorite. In the last couple of years, Shaquille O'Neal stated that Hakeem Olajuwon in the 1995 NBA Finals was the only big who ever dominated him in his NBA career. We all know that Shaquille O'Neal became one of the best bigs who ever played the game. And even though he didn't win an NBA championship with the Orlando Magic and he was kind of not destroyed, but Hakeem Olajuwon handled his business, they actually became close friends. And Shaquille O'Neal actually became a fan of Hakeem Olajuwon, admiring him for his footwork and his mental toughness. And I think they even had a commercial Taco together. Bell. Now Taco Bell introduces the Double Decker Taco. A 
and delicious original taco joined with beans and a soft tortilla. It's the taste big enough to bring the two sides together. The Double Decker Taco, just 79 cents. All right, you guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you next time. Peace, I'm out. Hey you guys, if you're active on Facebook, I can really recommend Open Court. As an NBA fan, you should find everything you need. If it's funny NBA videos, impressive highlights, or even NBA news, I check out Open Court every day.